it's been a few days. Yeah, busy few days in the Duke McKenzie house, I can tell you. It was announced last weekend that he will get an MBE, and this Saturday he opens a new gym. It's nearly 20 years to the day of his greatest night in the ring when he beat the brilliant Gabby Ganizales to win the second of his three world titles. That was some night at the Elephant and Castle, a master class against the odds and a privilege to be ringside. Now, Duke has been given the MB for services to boxing in the London borough of Croydon. I'm delighted to say that Duke McKenzie, MBE, three times world champion, is on the line now. Good evening, Duke. Oh, Steve, what a build-up. Um, well, listen, I don't <laughs> so mess I'm around, son. Again. Yeah, I'm <laughs> fighting again. Well, listen, you, I'll close my eyes, you close your eyes, and we can shadow box and do the interview <laughs> that way. <laughs> oh, Duke, first of all, congratulations. Were you shocked when you found out? Yeah, I was quite shocked, to be honest with you, Steve. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's quite a surreal moment for me because... I think, I've, you know, I've met some really, really lovely, famous people over the years, you know, like Muhammad Ali and mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone, Roger Stewart, you, Steve. Uh, Easy. Now, <laughs> yeah, now, you know, now I'm going to get a chance, I think, to go to maybe Buckingham Palace and, uh, wow. and meet, meet the Queen. It's just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's mad, isn't it, eh? Uh, but in all, it, every day of the week. No, in all fairness, Duke, how old were you when you first walked into the gym? Uh, 13. And how old are you now? 14. Eight. So there we go. 49, 49. Yeah, okay, so you... 48. Yeah. I forgot how old I am. So you're talking about 36 years of boxing for a club in Croydon, boxing yeah. in Croydon. In all fairness, yeah. that's a lifetime, so this is, you know, this is only the respect you're due. Now, where's the gym you're opening at the weekend? I've just opened the gym in Crystal Palace. I've just opened the Duke McKenzie Gym uh, Fitness Centre in Crystal Palace. Uh, it's on Victory Place. Listen to this. It's in Victory Crystal Palace, I'm going to the palace anyway. Yep. It's in Victory Place, which is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm an MBE. If I was in Saudi Arabia, I could sell that, couldn't I? You could, yeah, you could market it and do it that way. Joe, let's look let's have a little look back at the career because it was only once I printed off your record today that I realised how many of your fights I was at. Even when right. I was banned by your promoter, Mickey Duff, I still went to some of your fights. That's how keen yeah. I was. Um, what What was your favourite world title fight? Of all the world title fights, which was your favourite? Well, I mean, my, you know, my bestest fight ever, I actually lost. But the fight, I, I lost to Terry Jacob in a European title fight, which was the fight that shaped my character as a boxer. Yeah. And I'm sure if I hadn't have had that fight, I'd never have gone on to beat Gavi Canis Alice because the tactics that... That, uh, that exactly. Jacob used to beat me in that fight. I used the same tactics when I beat Gabby Canizales for my second fight. So the Canizales fight really it has to be yeah. considered to be my best ever performance. It was flawless that night, wasn't it? It was just something. You know when sometimes things go together. We saw that with Carl Froch last year, didn't we? Against um, against the Art Abrams. We saw it with Joe Kawasaki against Mikhail Kessler. It's just when when on the night against Jeff Lacey as well, when nothing can go wrong, everything goes right. That's what it was like at the Elephant that night. Yeah, I don't think he believed it. Well, no, I, he didn't believe it. Oh. I didn't really believe it. But, <laughs> you know, for, well, for the people that really sort of believed in me, like my trainer, Colin Smith, who I suppose I owe just about everything I've ever done in my life to, and, uh, and my brother Dudley, you know, they yeah. really believed me. I'm not even sure Mickey believed in me because obviously I'd lost the flyweight championship. Yeah. And uh, this might have just been, a, you know, this was like the last sort of throw of the dice. So, um, you know, like I say, it's just, it was a tremendous feeling, you know, the whole way through. I just had so much sort of self-belief. I had slept, drunk, walked, talked, Gabby Cohen's eyes for 12 weeks. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, I'm just, I'm in such a zone. I can't even remember his name. And you can actually see me mime on the television. I say to Colin, uh, what's his name? No way. Uh, uh, what's yeah, that? I swear to God. I was just so into what I was doing. And, you know, obviously the tactic was just to jab and move all night long. And I ran every day 10 miles. I was in the gym wow. every day. Monday to Sunday, I never, I never missed a day. And when we got to the weigh-in, and Kenny Garley was trying to front me, yeah. uh, I just said to him, I said to him, you know, I said if you miss one day's training, I will find you out, you know, because I haven't missed one for twelve weeks. And I, I, you know, and that's the way the fight went. I, I didn't stop jabbing and moving all night long. And yeah, it was, a, it was, it was probably my, my best ever performance. Oh. You, the, uh, I want to ask you about an interesting fight. It was a sort of strange old fight, really. They're sort of changing in the guard when you when you beat Magri in 1986. What do you remember about that fight at Wembley, Duke? You know, it's funny. I've just watched that fight today. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I swear to God. I just had a group of kids in my gym and I was just showing them the Magri wow. fight. How to fight under pressure. You see, the Magri fight was was a it was a it was a very good fight, and again, 
I was uh, you know, an underdog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, many, many people say, you know, beating Charlie didn't do him any favours in terms of popularity because he was a very famous guy, very popular. And loved, so, yeah. And loved, yeah, yeah. So I'm playing Charlie the whole bit. Yeah. But um, with the Magri fight, I had, I had some sensational sparring. Mickey Duff brought me over. Oh, Mickey Duff, I love Mickey Duff. He was, he was great with me. He brought over me this, uh, this Puerto Rican kid called Juan Miriel. Mm -hmm. And... Let me tell you, for, for like the three weeks that I had him before the Magri fight, I probably won about two rounds in the whole of the sparring. But he didn't beat me up, Steve. He was yeah. a great sparring partner. Just what and you need. I, oh, honestly, he was, he was sensational. And he, he mimicked the Magri style. And I knew if I could spar well with him, I'd have, I'd have more than half a chance. And, and I did. But I didn't beat him uh, in the sparring. It was great preparation again, great tactics again by train, my trainer, Colin Smith, and um, like I say, there were very few people who really thought I beat Charlie that night, but, you know, Colin was very quietly confident, and I think, you know, I, I was after about maybe the second round, because we knew that if we could weather the early storm yeah. from Magri, then, uh, you know, later in the fight, he'd start to tire, he'd start to die, and, you know, I was, I was younger, I was mm. fresher, I was obviously hungrier, because uh, Charlie had been in, obviously, he'd been a world champion. And European, that. and hard yeah. fights, yeah. Well, yeah, and then don't forget, Charlie went to Italy, I think, and and beat Jim Perio. Uh, I think it was that wasn't been out. I'm trying to think who he beat. It was it Nudella, Was it? No, I can't remember who Charlie beat. But yeah. he went to Italy and he regained the European Championship in about two rounds, which back then was unheard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? it was the only way to win in Italy, and no one did it that way. Let's get it right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then, obviously, Charlie came back as European champion. And I was the British champion, and that's how that match was made. And obviously, Charlie was managed by Terry Lewis. I was managed by, managed by Mickey Duff, and the, uh, and the match was made. Yeah. Well, listen, Duke, I'm going to let you go for the simple reason that I've got loads of other things to do. What I want to do is I want to try and get you in and get you, you know, get you in. Because I, I had uh, Clinton on the other week. He came, in, he came on the other day, Clinton, and he was on for about 20 minutes uh, talking about his book. Fantastic. And yeah. do, do, you know, do, you know, do you know he didn't bring me a book? When I said, where's the book? He said, you can buy one. <laughs> <laughs> and he meant it as well. All over, yeah, yeah that's, that's clearly all over. But he'll, I'm sure, Steve, he'll, he'll get you a book. Oh, um, listen, I don't. I think, I've, I think I've ordered one. Listen, Duke McKenzie, MBE, top quality, triple world champion. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Speak to you very soon. God bless you. Thank you. See you, Duke. See you, Fen.